whether you're a photographer, a YouTuber, or some other creative professional, you probably have a process for your creative ventures. Today, we're going to explore an Apple shortcut that I use with 56 steps when I publish a YouTube video just like this one. Let's dive in. Hey there, Aaron here from techphotoguy.com, and this is my second Automation August video where I'm talking about automating processes in my creative business to make my life easier. Be sure to stick around, hit that subscribe button down below so that you can get the next video when I release it. I've got some good stuff coming up. As someone who produces YouTube videos regularly and someone who works with photography clients regularly, I have a process that I like to go through to make sure that I take care of all the needed steps along the way, I don't forget something, and that I'm consistent with my ventures. Today, we're going to explore an Apple shortcut with 56 steps, which sounds overwhelming, but it all makes sense. It's, it's broken down into chunks. Regardless of the type of creative project that you're working on, you probably start with ideation and planning. There may be a scheduling component to it. There's the production phase, of course, where you make the thing that you're making. And then after you make it, there's probably some sort of an editing or a revision process that falls into place. Finally, it, it's all ready to go. You release it to the world. And then there's likely a promotion component so that people can help find it and see it and enjoy it and benefit from that work that you did. And so I have a shortcut that helps make sure that I go through a consistent process to do all of this. We're going to go over to a screencast so you can see what I've done, the apps that I'm using, and there is a download at the end. So you can grab this shortcut and use parts of it as building blocks for your own automation creation. It's not going to be 100% plug and play because, you know, it's very custom based on the apps and how you work. But I think you're going to get some good, useful chunks here that'll help you out however it is that you work as long as you're using a Mac. All that said, let's jump over and take a look at my computer. Okay, we are here looking at my Macintosh. This is the shortcuts window. And what you'll see is, if you haven't been into shortcuts before, it's kind of just a nice little tiled interface. We're going to focus on this TPG video prep. This is, you know, tech photo guy. And this video prep is for my YouTube videos, which are the examples that we're going through here. So this is the main shortcuts window. And you'll see it's a vertical list that I'm scrolling through here with a lot of different things in it. We're going to go through different chunks of this and I'm going to explain how I use it and what it does. So first we start kind of with the idea phase and just getting things set up. And so this very first set of actions here are related to identifying, you know, just an episode number. Essentially, I use a number to keep track of my videos in sequence. It helps sort things, you know, when I have things sorted. And so the first thing that happens is it pops up and says, hey, is this a normal video in your number series? And if I say yes, it does something. If I say no, it does something else. If I say yes, it goes into this chunk of shortcut right here. And what it's using, it's using an app called Data Jar. Data Jar is an application that syncs random bits of data. It's great for use with shortcuts if you just have arbitrary information you want to keep track of. Uh, I'm going to bring up Data Jar. You know, I don't have a lot of stuff in here, but what it's going to do, what we're concerned with is this one over here on the right where it says YT next episode. This is the next episode for YouTube, hence YT. Got it? Cool. Well, I'm going to make data jar go away because what you're seeing is it basically says we're going to start by getting the value for that next episode number. I'm going to set a variable to that value. And then that's going to get used later on. Then I increment that value. I add one more to it and I send that back to data jar. So each time I run the shortcut, I say, hey, this is a new one. It increments that number. And then next time I go to data jar to get the next number, it's already been increased. If it's not a normal number in the usual sequence, if maybe I'm setting this up for some point far in the future, it just replaces that number with an X. Okay, so we've got a number or an X, depending on whether this is a sequence video. And then we kind of ask for the topic and it starts to build some strings that I'm gonna use later on. So it asks for text, it says, hey, what's the topic? You know, so for this very one we're using right now, the topic is new video shortcut. Uh, depending on the topic, this is the text that you put in. It says set a variable 
And then what it does is it also creates another variable here where it prepends that episode number. So this video, for example, is number 45. And so it gives me a string that not just says new video to shortcut, it gives me a string that says 45 new video shortcut. So we're building some numbers together here. The next thing it does is it asks about if I have a scheduled publish date and it defaults to the next Thursday because that's the day when I pretty regularly publish to YouTube. So it starts with Thursday. It asks me for a publish date defaulting to that day. And then once I've done that, it sets that publish date in a variable. Now you'll see it's also subtracting a couple days there. We're going to get back to that later when we talk about scheduling things on the calendar, because that's one component of this. So if we recap where we're at, we've grabbed our number. We understand our topic, our title. Uh, we've asked when it's going to be published, and we've saved that information for later use. So we've gathered all the information that we need at this point. Now let's start doing something with it. So the first thing that I do is I create a notes file. Now I use Obsidian to keep track of my notes. And so when I create a notes file, it creates a file here over this next set of information. You know, it's got some tags at the top that Obsidian uses. I use the episode number and title here again, and that uses that for the file name and the title. And then this URL right here that I've highlighted is essentially a string where you can create a new note in Obsidian through a URL call. And so I'm going to create a new note. It gives it the file name, which includes my episode number and my title, and then content. It puts in that episode number and the title. And then it opens that URL, which creates the new note. So let's take a look at what that note looks like in Obsidian. So this is Obsidian. When I first create the note, you're looking at the note for this very video. When I first create the note, all of this stuff down here won't exist. It's just the shell of the note, but you'll see it's got the episode number and the title in it at the top. And then what I'll do is I go through and I flesh out the notes for the video. You're looking at the one that we're talking about right now. So I've got my notes in Obsidian that I use for recording for preparation. The next thing that it does is it adds a couple calendar items for me. So what it does is we've already got that episode title, right? It's going to do some text manipulation here. It's going to start with the word edit, and then it's going to add the topic. Excuse me. It's going to add topic to that and then combine it. So what that does is it creates a new string that says edit and then the episode title. So edit new video shortcut, for example, or edit, I don't know, awesome camera review or edit tips for Instagram success, whatever the case may be. And then it creates a new calendar item and it says, add that item, you know, edit my new video shortcut to the calendar. And it's adding it from an adjusted date to an adjusted date. Now these adjusted dates are up above when I said subtract two from the release date. So it gives me an item two days before the release date that tells me I need to edit this. This next set of steps here is doing a very similar thing, but instead of giving me something ahead of time for editing, it's giving me a calendar entry on release date. So it adds an item to my calendar to let me know, hey, this video releases on this date. Really straightforward, you know, and the key to all of that is this calendar item right here. The next thing that I do, and this is, uh, you know, something that I've done for a long time. I've been a long time OmniFocus user and OmniFocus is a task management system. Uh, it's based on the getting things done methodology. Oh, you don't have to be a strict GTD person to use it, but with OmniFocus, it will take a project template uh, in a format called task paper. And so I have some templates that I use to create new projects in OmniFocus. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a project in OmniFocus with a whole series of tasks that I'm going to be using for working through the video process. So 
I use Ulysses to store those templates. There's nothing magical about Ulysses as a place to store it, other than it deals with plain text well, and it integrates well with shortcuts. You could certainly put this in drafts. These could be plain text files somewhere. Regardless of where you store it, you can do this kind of a template thing. So I'm going to bring up what that Ulysses template looks like. What you'll see is it's an interesting format, right? So. This is going to be my project name in OmniFocus. Now, you'll see there's some strings in here like dollar sign video topic. Those are going to get replaced in a find and replace process a little later on. And what it's doing is it's using this task paper format that includes things like telling OmniFocus, is this a parallel or a sequential project? Do I want to totally mark the project as complete when all the tasks are done? Is there a context? And then all of these sub items become the entries in the project. You'll see that I use some emoji. This just helps me visually in OmniFocus when I'm looking at all my tasks. Incidentally, the, the orange diamond means it's some sort of a creation task. The yellow circle that you see down here at the bottom means it's some sort of a promotion task. And they've all got the camera icon because they're all related to video ventures. So it goes through here and it creates a series of tasks and it has both defer dates and due dates. Defer dates in OmniFocus are a date that a task becomes available. When does it start showing up as available to do? And the due date is when is that task due? So you'll see here, you know, for my write the notes slash script task, it becomes available essentially the day I create it, and it becomes due two days before the publication because I need a little bit of time to edit still. And then it goes through, you know, if I'm going to create some sort of an opt-in or a freebie, and then there's this big task here called record the video, which is obviously the creation. Um, I have a task related to backing up those files. I have a task for creating the YouTube thumbnail image. I have a task for editing the video. Makes sense. And then we get to, you know, kind of the set up the opt-in form if we're going to do that. Upload to YouTube, prep the metadata, and schedule that publish so it can go live on YouTube. And then we get into the promotion section where I use Twitter, I use Instagram, I connect directly with anybody mentioned in the video. Um, I might pin it to Pinterest. I might send an email to my email list and I might link it from within the techphotoguy.com website. So this specific checklist is not as interesting as kind of how I'm using it overall as part of this automation. Let me go ahead and close out that Ulysses windows for now. But what you'll see is happening here in the shortcuts is that I'm getting that checklist right here with this step. Once I have that checklist, I'm doing that text replacement. You saw those tokens in my template. So I'm replacing the topic with the actual episode number and title. I'm replacing today's date with today's date. I'm replacing the publication date with the publication date. And then I'm replacing uh, the Obsidian link because there's a link from here to Obsidian with some URL encoded text. I take all of that and I store all of that in a URL variable. And the reason that I'm doing this is because OmniFocus lets me create a new project by passing this template in through a URL callback. And so that's really this last step of this shortcut here is it says I've set this variable URL to this updated text with everything in it. And then this last bit here is I'm creating this link for this OmniFocus callback. It's got this beginning step here. The last piece is that URL that got built. And then I have a command to open that URL, which opens in OmniFocus and creates that new task. And so the way that that all works when it has all come together is that I can create a new video by going into shortcuts by saying, I'm going to run this shortcut. It pops up and says, hey, is this a normal video in the number series? I'm going to say yes. For some reason, shortcuts doesn't quite fit this button into the window because shortcuts is still not quite awesome on the Mac when it comes to UI. But here we are. I'm going to say yes. Then it's going to ask me for a topic. And I might say, awesome camera review, because I'm going to do a review of an awesome camera. I'm going to say done. I'm going to pick a publication date. Oh, let's just arbitrarily pick, you know, August 17th. 
it goes through, it does a bunch of running. Now, it's done. It's run. It's gone in the background and it's created a variety of things. You can't see all of those things, but for example, one thing I can show you is here's the OmniFocus project that got created. Awesome camera review published checklist. You can see it's got all these items from my template that are now OmniFocus tasks. They have defer and due dates, as you'll see over here on the right hand side. So that has been created. If I were to go over to my calendar, uh, which I'm not going to bring up uh, at the moment, but if I were to go over to my calendar, you would see there are new calendar entries for that. If I jump over to Obsidian, uh, I do an open command. And uh, if I type in awesome, what you'll see is, hey, I've got a blank shell note here for an awesome camera review. There's nothing yet, but I'm all set to start typing in my notes for what notes for what I want to talk about. So that's a walkthrough of my shortcut script that talks about how I put this all together. So if that was interesting to you, I want to have you do two things. One, hit the link down below to subscribe so that you get my next video, you know, hit that like button, all that fun stuff. But also hit the link down below to download this shortcut. You can download it from iCloud and bring it in and start playing around with it. You know, again, obviously, depending on the apps and services that you use, it's, you know, it's not going to run out of the box, right? You don't have my template in Ulysses to work with, for example. You don't have an Obsidian Vault with the same name as my Obsidian Vault. That said, this should give you some bits and pieces that you can adapt and put together in your own way if you want to build a similar shortcut. I hope you found this useful. I'm also going to include links to all the different apps and services that I mentioned, just so you can go check those out if you'd like. And as always, it was great to chat with you. Stick around and I'll be back again soon. Take care.